Welcome, this is 49A5 and this is called Equation of Simple Harmonic Motion in Time. So let's have a look and see what we've, we're doing here. Again, we're using this idea that the horizontal component of uh, position or displacement, velocity and time for uniform circular motion is going to give you the values for the displacement, velocity and acceleration for the simple harmonic motion. And we know this because when we look at the two moving together, we see that they stay together. If we, if we have an oscillator going backwards and forwards horizontally, and we have a, a, a top on a round table above, they stay in line with each other. So. What we're saying is, if I have, let's, let's do this, if I have a, a can on a turntable going round and round and round, its position horizontally will be exactly the same position as an oscillator oscillating back, backwards and forwards behind it. So, this means I can use the mathematics of the uniform of, of the uniform circular motion to describe the oscillatory motion now um okay if i imagine drawing this i'm getting a circle going round and round and round and underneath it i have a graph of position versus time and i see a graph that looks like that and if i look at this graph and i turn my head sideways i say oh that's a cosine you know when time t equals zero, I had the answer of one. So that's going to be a cosine curve. But that's because I moved the object to the right and let it go when time equals zero. So I'm doing a bit of finagling here. It's, I chose to do that. So the reason it's not a sine, it is a cosine, is because I chose to set the problem up this way. We'll get to supposing it doesn't play ball, supposing it's not, it's, it's, it's not going to be nice and it's going to do weird things. We'll get to that later. So in all these initial cases, I'm moving the object to the right and letting it go when time equals zero. So I get a simple cosine function in time. Well, I moved it to the right and its distance moved to the right is its amplitude and that equals the radius of the circle. So my x component, if I look across at these diagrams here, my amplitude is given by a, and my x component is given by x. And I have a simple trig relationship. x is equal to a cosine omega t. Omega t, of course, is the angle, like we said in the last section. If I draw this diagram in a little bit more detail, and I say, well, you know, at any instant, there's going to be a uniform tangential speed, which gives me a specific tangential velocity. That's not uniform because the direction keeps changing. Um, but if I take this velocity vector and I find its horizontal component, then that should give me the velocity of my object, which is oscillating. The oscillation goes backwards and forwards along the middle. So the velocity of this tangential component for the the, the, the x component of the tangential velocity will give me the velocity for my simple harmonic motion. Well, this is simply going to be that my horizontal velocity equals my tangential velocity times the sine. If that's omega t, this is omega t, that's omega t, a bit of geometry there, equals uh, minus v, the tangential velocity, sine omega t. And what's the tangential velocity? Well, we, we learned in physics one that, uh, what did we learn? Uh, we learned in physics one that uh, um, S is equal to R theta. Remember that from the definition of theta? Theta is equal to S over R in angular terms. And then we said, well, VT is equal to omega R and AT is equal to alpha r. And if you're in my class, I said, oh yes, angular. It has an r at the end, so you can remember which way around it is if you, if you need to remember which way around it is. 
So we know that the tangential velocity equals omega r, so I can replace the tangential velocity by omega r. And in this case, I know that my radius is the same as my amplitude, so that becomes omega a. Sorry, I shouldn't do that because it's not omega t. That becomes omega a. And so I say v is equal to minus a omega sine omega t. Uh, why the negative sign? Well, if you look, it's going in the negative direction. So. And then the third we can do is we can take our centripetal acceleration and find the horizontal component of that. Again, it's a simple trick. It's a is equal to minus ac, centripetal acceleration, cosine omega t. And you probably learned that ac is equal to v squared over r, which equals omega squared r in physics 1. This is why it's good to learn your equations, because you're not scratching your head looking for an old equation sheet. So we can substitute that in. Omega squared r is equal to omega squared a. So I get a is equal to minus a omega squared cosine omega t. Which incidentally, so those are your three basic equations. Which incidentally, because a cos omega t is x, this is o minus omega squared x. That's kind of useful. We'll use that again later. Okay. So this is the... Uh, trigonometric approach. There's another approach which is calculus, which is basically, oh, if I have this and I recognize that v is equal to dx by dt, I can just differentiate this with respect to time. Differentiate the top with respect to time and you get the second graph, second equation. And if I recognize that a is equal to dv by dt, I can differentiate this middle equation and get the bottom equation. So. It works out nicely either way. So three equations, very important equations. Uh, we do use them. And let's use them now. So we say a spring and block system oscillates with simple harmonic motion. The block is moved five meters from its equilibrium position. So let's have... There's my block. Here's my spring. 5 meters, so that's going to be 5 meters. I'm assuming to the right. I didn't say anything in the question otherwise. Not a good question if I, if I didn't, and I didn't. Uh, the block is released, and the system has an angular frequency. So my omega, my, let's do it over here, my omega is equal to 2 radians per second. What that means is that whoosh, that frequency of going round and round and round two radians per second if it was in hertz we'd say cycles per second so we're saying radians per second because we're not using a full circle as our cycle we're using a radian as our measuring unit um, what is the velocity of the block t equals 1.7 seconds after it's released so let's just think about this for a minute. Let's try and visualize it. So this is time going downwards. And I'm somewhere along this line. I don't know where I am. I'm going to just pick a point. I'm going to say there. So there's my time. And what I want to know is what's the velocity of the block at that time? That's the game I'm playing. So what do I know? I know that uh, A is equal to 5 meters. I know that. I'm assuming the, the block was released when time t equals 0. I didn't say that explicitly in the question. And it really, it should have done. So I know my amplitude. I know my omega. I know my time. And I say, well, these are going to be linked. I want to find my velocity. So what do I know? And you scratch your head. And writing this list helps a lot. So x is equal to a cosine omega t. And v is equal to minus a omega sine omega t. And a is equal to minus a omega squared cosine omega t. The more often you write it, 
the more likely you are to remember it when you need to remember it, we need to use the middle one. V is equal to minus A omega sine omega T. So V is equal to minus 5 times omega is 2 times sine 2 times 1.7 V is equal to minus 10 sine 3.4 get our calculators and the first thing we do is we check our mode we cannot be in degrees this is not the sign of 3.4 degrees this is the sign of 3.4 radians so make sure that your mode is in degree it is in radians and we say oh this is going to be uh, 10 sine 3.4 and I get an answer of minus 2.55 so this is minus minus 2.55 so V is equal to plus 2.55 meters per second. Notice please. I write down every step. I find that as a teacher I find students make mistakes when they skip steps. I don't want to make mistakes. So I write down every step. It takes me a few seconds longer. The advantage is at the end of the test, I can check every line. Where did that 2.5 come from? It came from the line above. Why is it positive? Because it's negative, negative. Where did that come from? Oh, 10 sine 3.4. I can check it back and back and back very easily. If I didn't write anything down, I couldn't check it. If it had a mistake, I'd have to live with it. So um, make sure you, you, you do things like that, and life will get much easier for you. And there we have it.